we collect a lot of data in the field, and when we come back to the office, we like to plot it up on a map, and also to interpolate it to make it into a nice contour map. Unfortunately, we often end up with something that looks like this. There's a lot of bullseyes in the data, and it's not really presentable to put into a report. We much prefer to have something that looks a bit more like this, where the main trends in the data are still visible, but the individual anomalies have been smoothed out. Welcome to QGIS 101. My name is Andreas de Jong, and in today's video, I want to talk about the interpolation of large datasets using the Saga Cubic Spline Approximation. I hope you enjoy it. Today, we're going to be looking at static water level data, but of course, we could have used any other kind of environmental data for the interpolation technique to work. Now, the static water level is the distance from a fixed point on the top of the well to the water level inside the well. If we correct this distance to the ground surface elevation, we can plot our data points. And then what we want to do is to fit a best fit line, or rather a best fit three-dimensional surface, through all of our static water levels, so that if we drilled a new well at a location where there's no information, we can estimate the depth to the static water level. Now we saw earlier that some interpolation techniques are not very good, at producing nice results, in particular the IDW, Inverse Distance Weighting Interpolation, which is famous for its bull's eyes. A much better technique is Cubic Spline Interpolation, which we're going to be using today. If you're interested in the maths behind this technique, please have a look at the paper by Haber and his associates from Germany. I'll leave a link in the description below. In QGIS, we can find the Cubic Spline Interpolation tool under Saga Raster Creation Tools. In this demonstration, I'm going to be using QGIS 3.10 Acoronia. Now, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to clean up our input data. Here's a data set that uh, we looked at earlier. It is about 30 kilometers east-west and 10 kilometers north-south. Let's switch on the digital elevation model. You see our data comes from a broad valley surrounded by some big steep mountains. If I switch on the hill shade, you'll get a better impression. By cleaning up the data, I mean that we need to get rid of data points which are far outside of our main population of data. Because if we interpolate these points, it'll create data in between which won't be very relevant to reality. The first thing we need to do is get rid of any data points which are far outside our, let's say, project area. The second thing we're going to have to do is check each of our data points. Like, I don't believe that we have very shallow groundwater levels here and then some very deep ones here. Maybe these are actually pumping water levels. But today, I don't have time to look at all of these data and uh, I think we'll just run the interpolation and uh, see what we come up with. Okay, we have cleaned up our input data. The next step is to run Saga Interpolate Cubic Spline. We go to our processing toolbox. I usually keep it in this location, but you can also access it from the top menu here. And we type interpolate. And you'll find it here, Saga Raster Creation Tools Interpolate Cubic Spline. Double click to run it. The points are the wells. Our attribute is the static water level. We'll leave the minimum and maximum points as they are, points per square as well. Now, we might change the tolerance. It should be between 60 and 200. I'm going to cho choose uh, 60 because I'd like to smooth our interpolated surface as much as possible. The output extent can be left as it is, because we've already cleaned up all the data points which are far outside of our main population of data. Now this is an important thing to look at, the cell size. I don't want a 1 meter cell size, otherwise it's going to take all day. Let's put in 100 meters. For fit, we'll use zero nodes, which is the standard one. And we'll just save it to a temporary grid. Press run. Okay, it has finished calculating and uh, let's put it under our wells. It has a funny shape, a bit like a hedgehog, but don't worry, we're going to 
deal with that later. So we've run Saga, now we're going to set up the symbology. So double click on the raster and we choose single band pseudo color and the one we want is all color ramps and red, where is it? Red to blue, this one. Now red usually means bad and blue is good so I'm going to invert the color ramp and press apply. Now see that it's very blue which is nice but uh, we can't really see what's going on so we go to min max settings choose this one here mean plus or minus standard deviation and the statistics is to update it canvas. What this means is that as we zoom in the colors change which is quite pretty. Okay so Let's see what the next step is to contour the interpolated surface. So all we need to do is make sure we've selected our raster. We go to raster, extraction, contour, and we'll leave everything as it is except the interval, which um, I'm going to choose two meters and press run. You can also close it. Okay, we have our contours. Um, in a weird color. Let's just change them to, to black, become a bit more visible. Okay. Now our next uh, step is to make a concave hull. I mentioned earlier with that don't worry about these jagged edges, we're going to take care of them now. So we go to processing toolbox and just type in concave. Now there are different tools which we can use, but the one I like to use is Concave Hull Alpha Shapes. Double click on it, our input layer is our wells, and we can adjust our threshold here. Basically, if you increase the threshold, it's going to make a bigger area around our uh, wells. So 0.3 is okay. We do not want to have any holes in our data. Press Run and close. Okay, so what we have here is now a polygon which goes around all of our wells and we're going to use it to chop away all this interpolated surface which is outside of our main population of wells and it's mostly garbage as you can see. I mean this is, this is not real, this is just uh, made up by the interpolation technique. So let's just check our crib sheet. Yes, it's time to clip the raster and the contours. Uh, contours sorry. And we go to processing toolbox and we write clip. Now to clip the raster we can use uh, clip raster by mask layer. Double click on it. Our input layer is our Grid, concave hull is our mask layer, and just press run. Close. You can see that it has clipped it nicely. While we're here, let's also clip the uh, contours. Press clip. Our input layer is our contour lines. Our overlay layer is the concave hull. Run it. And close. So now um, I can switch these layers off but I've lost uh, the colors, so I'm just going to copy them across. I'm going to go to Styles, Copy Styles, right-click, Styles, Paste Style. And the same thing for the contours, Styles, Copy Styles, and Styles, Paste Style. Okay, let's have a look at this. Not bad. One thing that uh, we should really do is to save our work now because uh, notice these are all temporary files which will get deleted if we close down our project. Export save as uh, not a geotiff. I'm also going to put it as a geo package uh, in our wells layer and I'll call it. Um,
press OK. Now uh, <laughs> we've lost the, the, the colors again, so we'll just go through this again, copy style and, uh, sorry, style, space style. And uh, right click, export, save features as, and choose wells, static water level contours two meters. Okay, now it worked. Okay, right click, styles, copy style and uh, styles, paste style. Now I'm going to, I'm going to remove some of these layers so that uh, it becomes a bit clearer. One thing we'd like to do is maybe add a few labels to our contours. Double click on it, labels and single labels. And we need to choose elevation in this case. Press apply. Um, the size, make it eight points. We're gonna have a buffer, yes. Maybe a bit of transparency there. I want it on the line, not above the line, and I'd like it curved as well. Say apply. Um, and you can see that we, we can see the labels now on our contour lines. Um, I'd like to add meters to them as well. So the way we do that is put our elevation in double inverted commas and space meters. Check that the output Put preview looks good, press OK and apply. And OK. Alright. Not a bad little map. Maybe we can add a bit of uh, 3D to it. The way we do that is we just uh, duplicate the layer and I'm going to rename it as shade and double click on it shade. Apply. You see it's quite um, dark gray here which is uh, we need to increase our Z factor a bit to see the changes. Maybe make it 50. It's quite dark. Make it a bit brighter. Maybe that's a bit too bright. Okay. We can't actually see it yet because we need to change our settings here so that the blending mode is multiply. Press apply. Now you'll notice that there are some funny um, well 3D effects here which are not so good so we'll go back to our shade and the way we can fix it is resample it as bilinear. Okay say apply and it now looks smooth. Okay Remember that rubbish in is rubbish out. So <laughs> maybe um, this doesn't look too realistic, but anyway, it's our first attempt at making a map of the static water levels of this area. And uh, we need to now um, open our layouts and uh, adjust it a little bit. It's already set to 100,000. Not bad. Um, let's save it as a PDF on my desktop. Save. Yes. Save. Okay. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this little video and uh, that you'll try the cubic spline interpolation technique for your data. Remember that rubbish in is rubbish out. So any interpolation you do is only as good as the quality of your input data. So please check your work carefully. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. See you on the next one.